century China, known at the time as the Celestial Empire, the story of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was born. An epic story of honor, love, and betrayal. Li Mu Bai and Yu Xu Lian, two masters of Kung Fu, true virtuosos of martial arts, combine forces to retrieve the precious Sword of Destiny, which has been stolen by Jen. The young thief, who faces an arranged marriage, is attempting to escape a life of submission and boredom. Throughout this mythical quest, these two upholders of the law, plagued by their secret passion for one another, thwart all the traps set for them and fight their adversaries, crossing China from the seas of bamboo in Anhui to the breathtaking heights of the Huanshang Mountains and the edge of the Taklamakan Desert. The women in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon are powerful muses, their feet are not bound, and they're free to go wherever they please. The men are warrior monks, valiant, fair and loyal, knights errant, helping justice to prevail. In both combat and love, the characters are free, passionate, unyielding and uncompromising. They fight above all for their own destiny. Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon had to start somewhere, and that somewhere is in the heart of the Wudang Mountains, birthplace of Kung Fu. In this eastern region of China, the three realms, the sky, the earth and humanity, become one to serve the mind, which is crucial to the martial art known as Wushu. Faced with the imposing blue temple overlooking the valley, the principles of honor and justice in the art of Wushu are more important than ever. Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon is like a Wu Xiapian film where combat with sabers is set to a rhythmic choreography in which the characters become dancers who perform multiple elegant and serene moves as they clash swords. The Wudang Mountains is where you find the elite of the world of Chinese martial arts, where students learn the ancient art of Wushu. In the heart of these mountains stand dozens of temples and schools, which welcome monks and pupils in a setting that is a cross between fiction and reality. For Master Gu, the art of Wushu is linked to meditation and to Qi, the resulting vital energy and inner breath adding to the yin and yang, these complementary forces you find in all aspects of life and the universe. Good and evil, strength and weakness, calm and agitation, these opposites nourish and support one another so that they can combine in total harmony. From a time when you constantly had to be prepared to stave off an attack from brigands, Wushu combines rituals of meditation, Tai Chi, Kung Fu and Taoist philosophy. The body can become a weapon once you learn how to master it. Excelling in the art of Wushu means not fighting. Of course, once peaceful solutions have been exhausted, when shouting peace, peace in a dangerous situation is no longer enough, and your adversary refuses to listen to the voice of reason, then you must act and use your art of combat. Disciples of Wushu draw strength from nature and from the landscape that surrounds them. Based on the observation of animal movements, seasons and life cycles, Taoism and Tai Chi are a basic part of Kung Fu training for all students at the schools in the Wudang Mountain region. To attain the ingenuity and technical prowess needed for combat, 
as in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Master Gu's students must first learn how to gain total and perfect control of their bodies and emotions. The years of training in Wushu become a way of life for them. Wushu is based on five movements. When you fight, you must advance, always advance. Face your opponent, do you see? I attack. I retreat. I move to the left. And to the right. I turn from my center. If anyone attacks me, I'm ready. I'm poised and supple. In the practice of martial arts, students must first master the notions of balance, stability, vigor, and harmony. It is only later that the notions of combat and confrontation come into it, since they are meant to be a last resort. It takes years to get the hang of wushu, and to understand that this art is as much about dodging your opponent as attacking them. It's important to get a sense of the purpose of each movement, from the first to the last. Movements must be energetic, with tensed muscles, but also very supple. The goal is to get your adversary to surrender. That's wushu. The quest for Wushu disciples is both internal and physical. It requires daily practice and a great deal of patience to attain a level of excellence. There is a Taoist proverb which says, nature is in no hurry, and yet everything is accomplished. Indeed, that is the guiding principle of the way that is Tao. In the Wudang Mountains, hermits, monks and students of Kung Fu all share this notion of meditation, respect, concentration, slowness and balance as a principle of conduct to be followed in their daily lives. Here, the secret to a harmonious life is to not seek to accomplish more than nature accomplishes. In Anhui, the water and the earth meet, creating oases in the heart of the mountains. The pines, beaches and bamboos of the Mukang forest plunge into waterfalls and clear water springs. This province is referred to as the province of water and green mountains. In Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, it is here that Limu Bai, driven by an ideal of justice and honor, throws the Sword of Destiny into a deep waterfall to keep it from the hands of Jen. Further east, this landscape of waterfalls and high peaks rising above seas of clouds gives way to huge, shifting bamboo forests, plunging us back into the mythical setting of the film. The aerial combat scene between Limu Bai and Yang Zhen. In China, it is said that brushes whisper the past, between them, Wang Wang and Yang Yong symbolize that thought. One makes brushes and the other is a painter and calligrapher. Together they scour the forest in search of unusual bamboo stems, which they will then use for calligraphy, an art which requires a very special culture, skill and state of mind. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, well, look at that one. And it needs cutting there and there. Yes, it's going to be beautiful. Here, look at that one. Is that the first one we cut? Yes. I need to start carving it from there. That will make a brush this big. You don't want the shaft to be any longer than that. The longer the shaft, the longer the brush. Short shafts have shorter brushes on the end. Which do you prefer? I like those. This one is funny. The wood is interesting. It's covered in bumps. I think I'm going to remove that part. And that part too. Shall we go back? Give me the bamboos. You take the knife. Careful. Wan Wan and Yang Yong have never considered living anywhere other than Anhui province. In the valley traversed by the three heroes in Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. Most of the greystone villages are surrounded by mountains and the roofs unfurl up to the sky like wings. Crisscrossed by narrow alleys and canals, the layout of the villages was designed to be in perfect harmony according to the precepts of feng shui. For Wang Wang, the region is particularly conducive to contemplation and creativity. workshop he makes all sorts of unique bamboo brushes which he sells to local artists. He is one of the last remaining Anhui craftsmen to keep this tradition alive, skills he learned from a master craftsman over a number of years. Making these unusual brushes is his way of contributing to the work of his favorite artists. The fluidity or strength of a work of calligraphy depends first and foremost on the quality of the brush. To avoid the risk of making a brush that is too ordinary, you have to pay close attention to every stage of the process. Here, lots of painters like to immerse themselves in nature. They find beauty everywhere, even when it is not obvious to us. You need to be inspired to sense beauty, to have your mind stimulated, to pick up your brushes and finally to express yourself with paint on rice paper. I am certain that artists find that inspiration here in Zaji so they can be happy here. When an artist asks me for a brush and I manage to satisfy them, I feel very happy too. I love these brushes as if they were my children. It's very important for me to create these unique tools for painters. Soft, downy brushes to paint cloudy skies. Chiseled brushes to draw the contours of steep landscapes. Brushes as precise as the blade of a sword to paint the finest of features. Discovering just how agile young Jen is with a paintbrush sends a chill down Yushu Lian's spine, leading her to suspect that she is her adversary and the mysterious thief of the Sword of Destiny. 
In calligraphy, one sweep of the brush across the rice paper can betray the weakness or strength of the person wielding it. Here, the brush is thought to be an extension of the body and soul. Since Chinese painting is linked to poetry, calligraphers must be cultured, and it is important for them to have their own personality as painters. Wherever we go here, into the mountains, onto the canals and lakes, into the villages, everything brings us back to our culture. Qi is central to Chinese tradition. It comes from Tai Chi. It means that when we paint a sign, from the first brushstroke to the final touch, we must do it in one full breath. Painters who do not breathe deeply enough have a weak touch. Those who let their breath be free have an energetic touch. The energy and the breath, or qi, are connected in painting. But it is not a sudden burst. It is more concentrated, flowing through the movement of the brush. It is the force of qi which drives the brush forwards. As night falls over Hong Kong, the village suddenly takes on the appearance of a film set. Several sequences from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon were filmed against the backdrop of these narrow streets and pools. You expect to hear the clash of sabres in the night. You feel as if you're going to come across Yushu Lian chasing Jen over the grey rooftops by the light of the moon. Everything here points to fiction and make-believe. Heading south into the Sichuan countryside, legends and reality merge once again. Rising above the paddy fields, the voices of peasant women harvesting the rice can be heard. Zhang Shi is a singer in the Sichuan Opera Company. From the rice fields to the stage, she never stops singing traditional fables and love stories. Passionate about her art, she goes on stage to forget her daily troubles and to invent other lives for herself. Working in the fields is very important because the family needs grains to eat. In the countryside, all the families grow rice. When I'm not in the fields, I'm at the theatre, singing. It makes a nice change. I sing operas, traditional stories from the past. In Sichuan operas, we often sing stories about the countryside. The stories are often very beautiful, but sometimes very hard too. Country life is tough, especially during the rainy season in summer. Zhang Qi lives alone with her mother-in-law. Her husband works miles away, and her daughter studies in the city. Oddly enough, her own life has proved to be very similar to the popular romantic arias she sings on stage. Stories about impossible love affairs, which start well and often end so badly. 
When her work in the fields is done, as she is mending her opera costumes, red to symbolise life, luck, love and more promising times, she thinks of her absent husband and escapes into her childhood fantasies and her past. When I met my husband, he was in a theatre company. Like me, he loved music and singing and dancing. I joined his theatre company and he fell in love with me, and I with him. But we were too shy to tell one another how we felt. We couldn't bring ourselves to say, I like you, or you like me. So in the end, we were introduced to one another by a go-between who had noticed that we had fallen for one another. In Zhang Qi's troupe, the singers and musicians all come from the countryside. They meet every week and travel from village to village to perform in front of local people in a bid to keep the tradition of Sichuan theatre alive. They recount tales of adventures, love stories and legends, like the one in Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. The pleasure of the theatre, the makeup and the flamboyant costumes allows them to escape their lives of toil as they reinvent themselves in imaginary lives and characters. <laughs> Jan Chong, the troupe's leader, takes on the seminal role of face changing, a local tradition which involves mime and magic tricks. Our performance is a legacy of Sichuan opera. It is a popular art and is recognized as cultural heritage. China is developing rapidly and fewer people are going to the theater. But we must protect and maintain these traditions. I am sure that in the future we will end up dusting down our ancient treasures and showing them to the world. Our favorite stories are love stories. Yes, love stories. <laughs> festivals, in between dragon dances and musical and theatrical performances, everyone takes the opportunity to talk about love, to have a laugh, and to express pride in such a colourful cultural tradition. It's a time for processions, for meeting people, for go-betweens to have a word in lovers' ears, for arguments to be settled, and for the red and gold costumes of emperors, clowns and concubines. It is a time to surprise, to dress up and lose oneself in stories and theatrical performances. I'm wearing a beautiful Sichuan opera costume. It's the costume for a lord. This is the imperial crown, the crown traditionally worn by the Jade Emperor. First, I must adjust it. There, I'll put the top on. I'm going to have to slip things inside, various soft masks. It needs to be on properly. I can't have it falling off when I'm doing the face-changing number. This is the movement I'm going to do. To one side and then the other. And there you have it. I've changed face. <laughs> 
Sichuan Theatre oscillates between improvisation, scripted performances and comic interludes. On the village square, the stories told all revolve around universal themes. A girl shares a secret joke with a farmhand, a hunchback tells funny stories, a young man asks a recalcitrant father for his daughter's hand in marriage. There are confidences shared behind screens, husbands and wives being deceived, and family settlements and arguments, like in any light comedy. The Sichuan landscape is as luscious as it looks in some of the most stunning scenes in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The rainy season is long there, and the heat and monsoons are tropical, so it is ideally suited to a very special fauna. The giant panda is the symbol of the region. This is a rare species, at risk of extinction. Away from areas of intense development, giant pandas are protected in the heart of the jungle and in nature reserves. The young are raised and fed in nurseries and then released into their natural environment, where they gradually wean themselves off any human involvement. In Bifengxia and Wolong, the forest has become a sanctuary for the dozens of giant pandas who find shelter there. A few kilometers further on, Sichuan is preserving another precious asset. Traditional tea plantations, where the delicate picking process is done by hand by women on family small holdings. It is known as the green gold of Sichuan. There is a Sichuan proverb which says, we can go without food, but we cannot go without drinking tea. Everything here comes back to that saying. The women who work on these plantations are aware of the value of tea and know that their white or spring tea harvests will be drunk by discerning connoisseurs the world over. They also know that the wealth and reputation of the region depends on them. Men can pick tea too, some do, but there definitely aren't as many men as women. They perform more difficult tasks. Picking is more of a job for women. I like this work because it is a nice little earner. Here the locals live off tea. It is the main source of income in the region. Every day, women from the village meet on the plantations and together they divide up the work. Some pick the big tea leaves which are dark green and whose flavour is more common. Others pick the small leaves which have barely opened and which are a very light green. These leaves are of a superior quality and sell for ten times the price of the big leaves. Besides the pride the women feel about picking one of the best teas in the region, they also benefit from the fact that it pays double the wage of rice picking. We get up early, prepare a meal, and then go straight out into the fields to work. When we've finished picking the tea leaves, we go to the market to sell them. Then we return home and do what we have to do. We are very busy all the time. Sometimes it gets to 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening and we aren't home yet, especially when there's a big crop of tea. When the harvest season is over, our lives are quieter.
Every day, buyers and sellers from all over the province throng to the village market. The baskets of tea are sold immediately and will travel all across China, depending on the market price. For Che Ling and the other pickers, that is proof of the value of their harvest and their labor. From tea plantations on terraces under a monsoon sky to village markets where the precious tea sells in a matter of minutes, this special plant is transported straight to the heart of tea houses all over Sichuan province. The Chaguan doesn't appear in many films, and yet it is very photogenic. It is a way of life, a place for rest and relaxation and discussions. In Sichuan province, people come here daily to spend many hours drinking tea. It is an excuse to watch the world go by and to meet friends. Zhou Men comes here every day and really enjoys the spectacle. He sees it as a place of freedom for citizens. One of the most fundamental needs of human psychology is to talk. In Sichuan, we say that if we internalize everything, bitterness sets into our hearts. You need to find an outlet for that bitterness and pain with a brother or friend. Talking to someone is enough to soften it. Conversation is beneficial to the body and mind. That's why so many people go to tea houses. Problems are solved over a cup of tea. I've been a lawyer for nearly 40 years, and let's just say I'm quite well known. At least half of the population here will have heard of me because the people I defend are ordinary people from vulnerable groups of society. I am known as a friend of vulnerable people, the lawyer for the common man. I remind all my colleagues, especially those who are reluctant to go into tea houses, considering them to be too common or vulgar places for peasants, that we Chinese, if you go back three generations, were all peasants once. We must not forget that. We are no better than the so-called common people. We are all equal. From his perspective, as an observer of Chinese culture and a bold dispenser of justice, the shaguan is the modern-day equivalent of the agora for city dwellers. The reason people come here to settle arguments and discuss politics and their love lives is because it can be all things to all people and to a nation. It is somewhere to contemplate the future, change, dreams and adventures. In the far west of China, in the Gobi Desert, Chaiguan is thought to be at the end of the Great Wall of China, but it could just as easily be at the start. This is the impressive gateway to the vast expanse of desert. It was used by nomads, adventurers and peddlers traveling the Silk Route. As in a mirage, in her dream, the young heroine of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon relives the moment she met her lost love, Black Cloud, in the Taklamakan Desert. It is said that once you pass the Jiaguan Fortress, you leave the land of the living and enter the kingdom of ghosts.
Everything here points to that saying. Arid plains as far as the eye can see, leading to hostile snow-capped icy mountains. Up a mountain at the other end of the valley, hours away from the nearest village, time appears to have stood still. Today, only a few semi-nomadic shepherds live here, cut off from the world. The solitude, the heat of summer, the cold which descends with the night, the wild animals, and the long walk to find pastures are all reminiscent of the lives of the men and women who paved the way for the caravans through this corridor in Gansu province. You really have to watch out for wolves. When I was minding the sheep yesterday, I saw one nearby. When I turned around, there was one right behind me. I'm so scared of those beasts. This big wolf kept following me. I was worried about losing my sheep. It's ages since a wolf attacked any of them. Do you think he was on his own? No. Round here, I think there are maybe eight of them. Life is tough for us. We work 365 days a year, even New Year's Day, which is the biggest festival of the year. We have to stay here and take our sheep to graze, so we miss all the fun. But this is our life. Life has four elements. Love, anger, sadness and joy. Wu Chan rears sheep with his wife, Fu Xiao, in a China far removed from the one we like to imagine. Every day of the year, they cross the mountains in search of pastures for their herds to graze on. They only go down into the valley two or three times a year to sell their sheep and stock up on food. Keeping sheep is harder for women than for men. They must do the household chores too. And if the men have to go away, the women have to look after the herd. It is the same for all the women here. It is my responsibility to protect the sheep because there are brown bears, wolves and lots of foxes. The foxes catch the lambs and the wolves catch the big sheep. It is my duty to protect them. Fu Xiao is one of the few women to live in the heart of the mountains. Despite the isolation and the hardship she endures working as a shepherdess, she cannot imagine living anywhere else other than with her husband. She talks of marriage as if it were a long journey. The way she sees it, it is only on a long journey that a companion will show their true strength, and it is only with time that a man will reveal his true feelings to you. We live here and we are staying put, but our son studies in the city. In these parts, unless you are educated to a certain level, you are obliged to work hard. Educated people can live off their wits, like lawyers, for example. But we peasants have to do physical work. 
We have no other option than to work hard. One thing is certain, and that is that I owe my success to my wife. She is a professional, not just a simple shepherdess. She can estimate our income for the year. She knows exactly how many sheep have died. She remembers everything. Without her, I wouldn't be where I am today. I think when men succeed, it is always thanks to the support of a woman. Wu Chan describes his life as a shepherd as if it were a fable. It has the makings of a perfect story for a film, made of love, anger, sadness and joy. In Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, it is said that everything is granted to bold and loyal hearts. In this setting, fiction and reality merge, leaving the imagination to conjure up those ideals of honour, justice, love and courage. <laughs> 